This is the third part of the offshore processes topic on, on wave transformations. And we're going to talk about uh, four different kinds of transformation. And this is as w w waves enter the shallow zone. We're going to talk about shoaling, uh, refraction, reflection, and diffraction. And I want to start with a video from a place in, in France, in, in the southwest coast of France, um, called Saint Jean de Luz. It's on the Bay of Biscay. A lovely, a lovely cove um, uh, formed here, it's just south of Biarritz. And on the northern end of the cove, the northeast end of the cove, there's this breakwater um, that, that juts out um, from the headland. And so this next video is taken um, along, along the breakwater from, from the headland. And to our right is the, op is the open sea. So I'll just start the video. And um, we'll see a lot of these wave transformations that we're going to talk about in this, in this part. Firstly, if you look at the waves approaching the breakwater from outside um, the cove, as they emerge, I'll just, I'll just pause it here, you can see that the, um, we get shoaling. So this wave, as you can see what it looks, at, it looks like a bit further out, you can barely see the wave. But as it approaches shallow water, the, um, the, the waves slow down, the celerity decreases. So the wavelength decreases, the energy is concentrated in a smaller, um, a smaller length, um, and so the wave height uh, increases, and you get a greater a wave amplitude, so they become more prominent. Um, I'll just start the video again, and um, we'll see what happens as the wave approaches the, the end of the breakwater here. Uh, in fact, just, I'll just stop it right there, and just right at this point, at the end of the breakwater, we get what's called diffraction. That's when waves passed around a solid object. Um, the, the wave bends in around um, a, a towards that object. And so we get a curve in the, uh, in, in the wave forming right, right there at that point just there. We'll have a, 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 a vertical view of a case of diffraction later on where it'll become more apparent. Um, I'll start the video again. And we see that as the, um, the wave hits the breakwater, we get reflection of the wave. So we get a wave forming back in, um, back out to sea. And because it's not a, a parallel wave to the breakwater, it's oblique, the wave, um, uh, the, the, the wave departs um, at a different angle from the wave, the instant angle we see here. Now, I want you to have a look over here. You can see, if you just pause right here, we can see um, the angle of these waves compared to the instant angle of the waves over this side. So what's happening is waves are coming in from, uh, from the ocean. Um, as they hit shallow water, they slow down. So on this outside here, it's a bit hard to sort of show it on, on, the, video, on the video. In fact, the, the edge nearest the breakwater hits the shallow water first, and so it slows down, and the waves start to line up along, along the breakwater. They don't completely line up, but they, the angle of the wave, the angle of incidence changes, so it's much more parallel to the breakwater as it approaches the breakwater. That effect is called refraction. Um, and so what you tend to see is waves lining up parallel to um, a shoreline as they approach the shoreline, because the, the shallow air, the, the part of the wave that approaches the shallow waters first, slows down uh, more. And we can see that um, even more clearly on this other side of the breakwater. We can see the waves are all coming at the same angle, but as they pass into this shallow water, they're bending around, get diffraction right at the end of the breakwater, but refraction um, further along the wave here. And right here, the wave angle is, is, is probably different by about 20, 25 degrees from the incident wangle, wave, wangle, wave angle um, coming in from the, from the ocean. So that's ref refraction. So I've talked about um, shoaling. Uh, I'll start the video again. Shoaling is the wave uh, comes in and reaches shallow water. The wavelength decreases as the wave slows and the, the, wa and the wave height increases. Um, diffraction, right at the end of the breakwater. Um, refraction, um, as the waves bend to run parallel to the sea. Reflection, as the waves pass out, back out to water. And where the waves, the, the outgoing waves cross the incoming waves, um, they get superimposed and the wave height actually increases. So with this pattern of oblique waves uh, and reflected waves, 
we get a, a sort of a crisscross pattern of, of, of waves forming and you get effectively a standing wave um, where, the, where the waves are crossing each other. Yeah, nice obvious uh, diffraction around the, the end of the, the breakwater just here. But refraction further around. Okay. So firstly, shoaling. That illustrates all the different transformations in one spot. But to, to look more closely at shoaling, you can see the wave, the swell, coming in um, to the shallower water. And as it approaches shallow water, um, the wave slows down because there's an interaction between the wave and the bed of the water. Um, the wave slows down, the wavelength decreases. The period stays the same because the frequency and period don't change. The same number of waves pass through, uh, pass at any given point regardless of the wave speed, but the wavelength decreases, the energy intensity increases and the wave height de increases. Um, and that's referred to as shoaling. There's also energy dissipation as waves interact with the bed uh, of the sea. And even out, out in the ocean, there's, there's friction with the air. Um, so there is energy dissipation, so the waves will gradually attenuate with time, but that's very slow. Um, and shoaling is quite a different process where we actually get an increase in amplitude uh, of, the, of the wave. And there's um, a, a relationship from, for predicting the, um, the change in wave height um, as a function of the... Uh, the change in, in wave speed, um, and this factor Ks, which can be predicted from the water depth um, the, the dip divided by the um, deep water wavelength. So remember, we can calculate the deep water wavelength um, using the, uh, the, the, the shallow wave equations and um, the small amplitude wave equations, um, and so we can then estimate Ks um, using this graph here. This, is, um, uh, this, this, this diagram uh, d demonstrates what's happening with the refraction. We have waves approaching uh, um, uh, a transition from deep water to shallow water at an oblique angle. As waves pass into the shallow water, they slow, and so we get a shift in the angle of the wave, um, the, the, um, the instant angle of the wave relative to this interface between the deep and the shallow water. Um, and that's called wave refraction and we can um, calculate the change in the angle of the wave using the ratio of um, wavelength um, to the open water, the deep water wavelength. And here we see a good example of, uh, ref of, of refraction uh, into a curved cove where the waves um, have refracted so they almost match the, uh, the shape of the, of the, of the shoreline. Uh, I'll just start this video here and it shows uh, reflection, what happens with reflection. In this case, the, um, the, the barrier that the waves are hitting are parallel to the waves. Um, and uh, what we get uh, under those situations is a little bit different from what we saw um, at the breakwater in St. Jean de, 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 de Luz. So the waves heading towards, the sign you saw the waveform heading towards, um, some barrier, it could be a breakwater, um, and, and we'll get reflection when those waves hit the barrier. There'll be some energy loss as well. And so here comes the wave back um, out um, from the barrier. The blue is the wave heading out from the barrier, the red is the wave, the incoming wave, and the black is the sum of the two. Um, and so what we see as a result of the, super, the superposition of those two waveforms is a, a wave which is described as a standing wave with a, a much higher amplitude. It's twice the, the amplitude of the, um, the, the two individual component waves. And it appears to be stationary and just going up and down. And that's a standing wave. If you were a kayaker and you approach one of these um, breakwaters uh, when there's a reasonable wave coming in, this is a very difficult situation because you have very high, um, high, peak, high very steep waves being formed by these standing waves. Okay. If, of course, the waves are approaching at an oblique angle, um, not parallel to the, uh, the, the, the breakwater or whatever the barrier is, 
as we saw in the video at the start of this topic, then they get reflected um, also at an oblique angle. And so we get this sort of matrix of, of waves forming. Um, Coplotus gauff is what it's called. I think gauff is French for waffle, so you get kind of a waffle pattern um, forming uh, as a result of uh, this, what, this oblique reflection. Um, and, um, and you get these peaks where the two wave, waves uh, are superimposed. And as they, they move, those peaks move parallel to the, um, to the, uh, the barrier, the, the, the breakwater. And so they, they migrate along, along the breakwater. And finally, diffraction. That's where a, a wave approaches uh, an opening or the end of, a, of an object. And around the end, you get curving of the wave um, and, a, and a sort of a... A, um, a, a, a transformation of the wave below, around that, that, that obstacle. You also are likely to get refraction with diffraction because you get a shallowing of the water um, as a result of the obstacle as well, or because the obstacle is built there because there's shallow water. Um, and so you're also going to get refraction. So this pattern here, although it's described as diffraction, it's almost certainly got a component of um, refraction uh, as well. Um, so we have in this particular example, it's quite similar to the, um, the video we saw at the start of this topic, uh, way we have diffraction around the end of the breakwater, we get um, refraction as well um, around the breakwater and we get these um, Kapotis Gauff uh, waveforms forming um, as a result of an oblique reflection uh, on the breakwater. And here we see diffraction uh, through an opening between two, an island and a headland. In that case, because the, the water curves around both the, um, the, the headland and the island, we get this, this curved waveform uh, below the or down, downwind or um, on the downstream side of that opening. And we get um, diffraction around both ends of this island. And as the waves uh, re-meet, um, down, downwind or down, down, down sea of the island, then we have um, this sort of interference pattern developing uh, in this zone uh, right here. Okay, so that's the four main transformations that's, that occurs um, as waves pass into, into the shallow zone, um, uh, which are important, particularly because a lot of engineering structures are constructed um, in, in this zone.